The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. No, 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 stop! Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Happy New Year as I'm posting this video. This is going to be my Mandalorian Season 2 Top 10 Predictions video. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I will be doing Mandalorian videos during the break. They've already announced when Season 2 episodes are going to start, so we're not going to have to wait too long before we get Season 2. They're also finally selling Baby Yoda merch, so we'll do a giveaway for that. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave all your predictions about Season 2 on the video. I'll name a new winner at the end of this. Big spoiler warning for everything that happened on The Mandalorian Season 1 as we go through our top 10 here. So starting with number 10, they won't find more members of Yoda's race. I think this is a pretty easy prediction to make. The whole idea of the armorer's mission that she tasked him with is that he's supposed to go find his people. And if you know anything about the way George Lucas treated the Yoda character so protectively, actively seeking to prevent other people inside Star Wars and Lucasfilm, the TV shows, the books, the movies, the video games, from creating any new backstory for the Yoda character. Anytime anyone got even close to saying what planet Yoda came from or who his parents were, what his childhood was like in the Jedi Order, he would drop the ban hammer hard. No explaining Yoda. Yes, George Lucas did sell Lucasfilm and the rights to Star Wars to Disney, so technically he doesn't control it anymore since 2012, but all the current people making Star Wars, like, you know, Dave Filoni, Jon Favreau, worship at the feet of George Lucas, so at least they aren't going to trample on his wishes and just completely explain every last detail about Yoda in a way that George Lucas never wanted to see on screen. There was a joke that George Lucas did tell, though, about Yoda during the commentaries for the Blu-ray editions a couple years ago. He called Yoda the illegitimate child of Kermit in Miss Piggy, but obviously that's him just joking. Number nine, even though they might not find all of Yoda's race, they will probably get information on the planet that baby Yoda himself came from, which might not necessarily be the original homeworld of Yoda's race, just the planet that baby Yoda is believed to have been born on. He's about 50 years old, that means he was born around the same time that Anakin Skywalker was born before the events of Phantom Menace. Theorycraft all you want about the possible connection between two powerful force beings like that being born in such close proximity to each other. But we really don't know enough about Yoda's race to know what it's like when they give birth. They're amphibious looking creatures, they could give birth like most warm-blooded mammals, but they could also be hatched from eggs, like frogs lay eggs. But even then, that's just trading on a lot of offhanded remarks that George Lucas makes, calling Yoda a frog-like creature. Finding the planet that he came from, though, is the first major step in finding the ancestral home of Yoda's race. But I think finding their ancestral home planet is something that's probably going to take the entire run of the series, if they ever find it. It'd be like treasure hunters finding the lost city of gold in the second season of a TV show. That's not something you do right away. Number eight, Baby Yoda still won't speak with words like Yoda spoke with. Right now, he just garbles and coos like a human baby. It's not clear if he's even capable of speaking words and just chooses not to because he is 50 years old. Even if he's a baby, he's had much more time to learn how to communicate through body language than a human baby would at the same level of biological development. Another really easy prediction to make is that he's probably not going to grow a lot physically larger. I think part of the idea in doing a character like someone from Yoda's race who ages and physically matures so slowly is that if the Mandalorian series runs for like five seasons, baby Yoda will physically stay a little baby for the entire run of the series. But number seven, follow up, he will learn and develop mentally and is a force user a lot. So it's not like he's completely frozen developmentally. His ability to use the Force in different ways will get more fine-tuned. And when he does choose to hulk out in moments of great distress, like when he lashes out in anger to protect the Mandalorian like Force-choking Cara Dune, those types of abilities he manifests will get bigger and bigger, crazier and crazier, and just cooler to watch on screen. Right now, though, as far as we can tell from the Season 1 episodes, every time he's done that, he's done it instinctively. The force choking thing was a little bit different because of the way he was twirling his tiny little hands and fingers around making tiny little fists. You don't really see human babies get that elaborate and dramatic with their poses. If he were at the same level developmentally as a human baby, he would just start kicking and screaming and flailing his arms all over the place. The motions that Baby Yoda was making during this are the same that you might see in older version of Yoda during the original trilogy making, implying that he's a lot smarter than he seems. 
Number six, another easy prediction to make. The Armorer said that some of the Mandalorian's former clan members in the covert here may have escaped before the Imperials came back and killed these Mandos. That's probably a teaser that we'll see a few of them pop up around the galaxy in future seasons when they go to other planets in the Outer Rim. And just to be clear, even though these ones were killed off, there are still little pockets of Mandalorians like this all over the Outer Rim planets hiding out after the Great Purge. So I think it's implied that there are still at least a couple hundred or even a couple thousand still left alive after the Great Purge, just scattered all over the galaxy, just waiting for someone to rally them to rise up again. If only there was a Mandalorian character out there using something that the older Mandalorians used as a totem to rally around, hmm, you know, what could you actually use as a signal to rally all the Mandalorians together? Number five, obviously I'm talking about the Darksaber. If you never watched the animated Clone Wars series or Star Wars Rebels, the Darksaber was used by the Mandalorians in ancient times as a symbol to rally around and unite all their warring clans together under a single banner. Right now Moff Gideon has it, it's implied that he stole it sometime during the Great Purge on Mandalore during the course of the original trilogy. Of course I think they'll let Pedro Pascal's Mandalorian character play with it at some point on screen, but I don't expect him to steal it back from Moff Gideon permanently during season 2. Seriously, if we're talking about video game mechanics here, like it's a bit of a fetch quest series where he goes around collecting bounties so that he can pay for upgrades to his armor, the Darksaber is like the legendary drop that you get after one of the big final bosses in your final raid encounters. If the show runs four or five seasons, they would probably save something like the Mandalorian wielding the Darksaber on a regular basis for one of the final seasons. But the Mando got his jetpack upgrade at the end of season one, Darksaber upgrade obviously off in the distance, there's got to be some other upgrades that he will acquire during season two. So number four, next big armor upgrade he's probably going to get, and it's actually a pretty easy upgrade, is just to get more larger rockets that he can fire out of his jetpack. Larger than the whistling burrs that he carries in his gauntlets, because a lot of the weapons that he has are inspired by Boba Fett's weapons in the original trilogy, and there's still a couple weapons they haven't done from the animated Clone Wars series and Star Wars Rebels that those Mandalorians used. And because it's Star Wars, obviously Star Wars trades a lot on the trope of super weapons. The Arc Pulse Generator was a Mandalorian designed weapon, but it was used against Mandalorians during the animated series. They could introduce some stuff like that eventually too. Right now, the only super weapon that we know about on the show that the villain, obviously Moff Gideon, wants to acquire is Baby Yoda. He is literally the super weapon that he wants to use to take over the galaxy again. So number three, we'll probably also learn the exact nature of Moff Gideon and Dr. Pershing's cloning plans for Baby Yoda and how they intend on using his power and his DNA to create an army of force-sensitive clones. It was also implied that Moff Gideon plans to use Baby Yoda himself like a weapon, exploiting him as he grows up, possibly turning him to the dark side of the force in the process. Because if you abused someone like that over a long course of time, they would also fall to the dark side too. Probably wind up killing you and everyone around them, but then going on a tear and turning into someone just as bad as Emperor Palpatine. Best example of that was that funny scene at the beginning of episode 8 with the scout troopers. They both punched Baby Yoda, which is almost an unforgivable act, but Baby Yoda literally bit one of them on the finger. So if you mistreat him, he will literally and metaphorically come back to bite you. I'm really hoping though that we get to see inside the actual Imperial facilities that Moff Gideon is using and that he controls, like inside their Imperial version of the cloning facility. Because of all the implied cloning stuff that's going on in this series, they might also bring back some Kaminoans from the prequels as part of this plot. We only know a little bit about what happened to their people and the planet Kamino after the prequels. It was recorded officially that the Emperor shut down the cloning facility on Kamino after Revenge of the Sith, but clearly we know that that's a lie and that wasn't the end of his cloning experiments from the events of Rise of Skywalker. Number two, this is actually a pretty big one. The Lucasfilm people revealed that we'd see more classic characters from the original trilogy Skywalker Saga during season two. I'm trying to temper my expectations for what that will look like. People hear that they're doing classic characters from the movies and immediately they start thinking about Luke Skywalker and the really big characters. But the only version of Luke Skywalker that's actually been rumored to appear on any of the Disney Plus shows is a very, very young little kid version of Luke during the events of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series on Tatooine. And he'd only be around 10 or 11 years old at best while that's happening. Even though Sebastian Stan is probably waiting by his phone on the set of Falcon and Winter Soldier waiting for that call to play adult Luke Skywalker. No joke, he actually looks like Mark Hamill's son in real life. He really does look like a young version of Luke. So if they ever did do adult Luke that was not Mark Hamill, he would be perfect for that. 
So when they say original trilogy characters will be appearing during season two, I'm mostly just expecting bounty hunter characters because even though the show is really about what's going on with baby Yoda, there's supposed to be a lot of bounty hunting happening during the series. So it just makes sense if he's a bounty hunter, he would run into other classic bounty hunters who are still alive. In number one WTF prediction, this is also a pretty easy one too. We'll see new rogue Jedi and force sensitive characters on the show. They're looking for the Jedi that survived the purge. That's one of the armorer's edicts to him. Go find other Jedi to train him. Enemy sorcerers is what they called them on the TV show, which I thought was hilarious. There's that special religious organization centered around the Force, like the Church of the Force that appears during the course of the new trilogy, and Jedi trainees who failed to complete their training before the purge happened. There was even a storyline during season six of the Clone Wars where there was a holocron that the Jedi had with the names of a bunch of force sensitive children all over the galaxy that had yet to be contacted by the Jedi and brought into the Jedi temple for formal Jedi training that could still be alive in present day. So I don't know if they're going to introduce any kind of holocrons or anything like that, but there's still a lot of force sensitive children from the original trilogy and prequel era that because of the purge never went through Jedi training, but would still be alive in present day and still be force sensitive. But I'm not expecting Yaddle to show up suddenly or Yoda's force ghost or anything like that. I think most of the force sensitive characters that they introduce on the show will be completely brand new characters that we've never seen before. Because if you think about it, the show has already proven that it doesn't need major movie characters to appear in order for the show to be popular. It's already crazy huge with just Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian who are two brand new characters that we never saw before this series. What that allows them to do is use the TV show to world build and because there's not going to be any more Star Wars movies for a while, the Disney Plus series will be responsible for expanding the Star Wars universe and in order to do that you have to introduce new characters. Everyone let me know in the comments though which new rogue Jedi or deep cut force sensitive characters from the expanded universe do you want them to introduce on the show or bring back into the canon. But I will keep doing Mandalorian videos throughout the year. We're probably going to get a trailer sometime by the summer because they're almost done filming season two right now. They're well into doing their season two episodes, so it shouldn't be that long before we get some more teasers. Congratulations, Seal Phantom. You're the giveaway winner from my last big Star Wars video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Everyone click here for my Mandalorian season two teaser and episode eight ending scene and click here for all my Witcher Netflix episode videos with Henry Cavill. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. Happy New Year.